What's going on guys? Welcome into another options theory video. And in this video, I'm going to cover rolling options. I'm going to talk about what it is, when you do it, why you do it, and how it works, like the actual mechanics behind rolling an option. It's pretty simple when you understand it. Um, so I'm going to use the chart of Occidental Petroleum here on the screen. It's a daily chart to uh, kind of run through a case study of rolling an option. So rolling options is typically done with option selling strategies. That's important. So in my case, my personal case, I trade the wheel strategy. And with the wheel strategy, you're selling a cash secured put. You may or may not get a sign on that put, but let's say you do get a signed on the put, you then buy 100 shares of the stock and then you sell calls against that. If you're interested in the wheel strategy, that's what I do. You can watch my previous videos. I also have an educational video on what the wheel strategy is that you'll see at the end of my video, if you're interested. But that's one way to, to sell options. That's one strategy of selling options. You could just sell credit spreads, iron condors, strangles, straddles, or you could just sell naked puts or calls, just naked options, just selling a call or selling a put. And in any situation, and all these strategies, the main goal is for the puts that you sell or the calls that you sell to go to zero and to expire worthless. Because when you sell a put to open it or sell a call to open it, you're receiving premium. You're essentially shorting the contract and you want it to go down in value. And in these cases, expire worthless and go to zero. So let's say I sell a call on Oxy way up here at 70. So I sell the 70 strike thinking that it won't get up there. And then, you know, it stays down here. Maybe it goes down. The option, the 70 call way up here, it goes to zero. It expires. Theta decay crushes it. And as option buyers, which I'm sure many of you have, have experienced, you know the power of theta. You know what it's like for your option to decay. Option sellers and option selling strategies, they try to capture that. They try to capture that theta decay because at the end of the day, a lot of or most options expire worthless. So um, you just want to kind of capture that, sell the option and hope it goes to zero. But what happens if it doesn't go to zero? What happens if it actually goes the other way? and your option ends up increasing in value, and then you're at a loss. Well, you can just take the loss, close the trade and be done with it, or you can roll the option. And what rolling the option does is it pushes out the expiration date of your contract, and therefore gives you more time on the trade for it to hopefully work out in your favor. So let's do a little bit of a case study with Occidental Petroleum. Let's say, uh, right now Oxy's at 62, Let's say I want to sell the $60 put. So I think Oxy is going to stay up here. This green zone is support. So every time it dips into this green zone, it usually bounces. So I think the $60 put is, is going to expire worthless because Oxy is going to stay above it. So that's the, that's the thesis. And let's say the expiration date is right here. It doesn't matter the day, just right there. Okay, in September, somewhere in September. So I need Oxy to stay above 60 by this line right here, by expiration. And if that happens, the contract goes to zero and I profit all the premium that I sold. Okay, perfect. But in this case, that doesn't happen. It instead goes down, has bad earnings, sells off. And as we approach expiration, Oxy is way down here at 56 bucks, which means my put is $4 in the money. So my put that I sold has increased in value exponentially, and now I have a really big loss. And like I said, you have two options. You can either close it for a loss and be done with it, or you can roll it out. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll the option out in time. And what that does is that'll push this expiration date out way over here. So now, now that I rolled the option, I have all this extra time for it to possibly recover out of this demand zone and push back up, put the uh, make the option out of the money and therefore decay to zero and I profit on the trade. So that's, that's what rolling the option does. It gives you more time and it pushes out the expiration date. That's effectively what happens. And in some cases, you can even move the actual strike. So not only push out the expiration date and give yourself more time, but you can actually improve the strike that you sell 
maybe down here to the 57 strike. So now you only need it above 57 instead of above 60. That's a lot more doable. So maybe it bounces a little bit, goes to 58 bucks or something like that. And it's technically above 57. So you profit by expiration. You end up, uh, the, the new put that you sold at 57 uh, expires worthless and you profit. So that's the other way to do it is you can not only extend the duration of the trade, but you can actually adjust the price of the trade, the uh, the strike that you sold. So that's how rolling an option works and effectively what it does. But let's actually spell this out. So in our hypothetical on Oxy, we sold the $60 put expiring September. And let's say we received $1 for it. So we sold the put for $1 and expires in September. Okay. Then obviously the put goes in the money that, you know, Occidental drops down to $55. The put is in the money, not looking good. So let's say Oxy drops to 50 bucks, 56 bucks, which is what I said in the, in the example. And the put goes in the money. Okay. In the money. And now the, the, the premium of that option has increased. The put value increases to $2.50. So now the option that you sold for $1 is now worth $2.50. So you're at a $150 loss. And like I said, one of your options is to close it and be done with it. Take the $150 loss and move on. Or you can roll the trade. So you decide to roll the option out to December. So instead of September expiration, you give yourself uh, three extra months of time. December is now when your option expires. So how does that actually work? What are you actually doing? Well, in order to roll, in order to roll, you need to close the original option. That's just the way it works. You have to actually close the option. And, and taking the loss, which was the other uh, decision you can make, that's also what that is. You're closing the original option. So yes, you are actually realizing a loss when you have to roll. So you close the trade by buying back the put for 250. So you actually do have to pay the 250 to buy it back, okay? But, but however, the next step to complete the roll is you sell the December put. And let's say we keep the same strike, so the $60 put, the December $60 put for $4. So, I mean, you know, as you go further out in time, the more time an option has, the more valuable it is. That's just how options work. The closer to expiration it is, the lower in value it is. So in this case, you're going from September all the way out to December. So this contract has like three months time on it. It's gonna be pretty valuable. And in this hypothetical, it's worth four bucks. So you sell the option for four bucks, it's at the $60 strike, and that's the new trade. You push the expiration out from September to December. But what actually happened here? So. You originally sold for $1. So you sold the option to open it. You sold the put, received a dollar, closed it for $250. You bought it back, paid a debit to close that trade, and you paid $250. But then you opened another put for $4. So net, all that together, is $2.50 credit. Because if you just bring up the calculator here, you received 100, then you subtract 250 because you paid 250 to buy it back, and then you received $4, 400 bucks net credit of 250. So now the new trade is you sold the put, your net credit is $2.50, and it expires in December. So that's the new trade. Let me write that down here. So sold $60 put, expires December for two dollars and fifty cents now that's important to note like take note of the difference between you know this right here this is where we end and this is where we started this is where we started um and then when we after we rolled it this is how it looks so we originally sold the 60 dollar put 
expiring September for a dollar. But after rolling the option, we now have a $60 put sold in December for $250. That's the new net trade. And now you have all this extra time for Oxy to play out and for your trade to work. So take a look at this. This is an actual example of a trade that I have going on right now. So this is Weeble. I, I trade the wheel strategy and these are my open positions right now. Um, so I actually have a CVS cash secured put sold at the 73 strike. That's what this line is right here. Take a look. CVS $73 expires August 4th and I sold two of them. I collected 50, 75 cents for it. The average price is 75 cents. But right now the last price is actually at 88 cents. So these puts have increased in value and I'm at a $25 loss right now as a result. So let's say I wanted to roll these out. At least with Weeble, if you go to the left here and there's uh, these three dots here on the far left of the item, the line item, it gives you the option. You can close the position, you know, close by market order, close by limit order, close order entry, stop loss, whatever. Uh, create a new order right here. Create rolling order. So every broker should or it could have some type of wording or an option for allowing you to roll the contract. And Weeble does right here, create rolling order. So if I click this, it'll bring up an order entry automatically right here. And what you can see is what it's doing right here. Uh, it, this green line is a purchase order. I am buying back the two puts that I sold for August 4th at the 73 strike. So my open position that I have right now, I'm buying it back. And then simultaneously, I am selling the same strike, 73 puts, two of them, but this time instead of August 4th, it's August 11th. So I'm pushing it out one week. I could change that. I could go all the way out to November. Let's go to November 17th. And I'm gonna still do the 73 strike. I guess it's not an option. Let's go to September 1st. Instead of August 11th, we'll do September 1st. At the 73 strike, pushing it a month out. And you can see right here, the limit price is actually a net credit of 37 cents. So the net trade right here, you can see that the top line is really like the net trade. So I'm selling two puts and I'm receiving 37 cents to do it. I'm receiving 37 cents to roll this trade because the, the puts out in September are worth a lot more than the puts in August. So by closing the August and selling the September, I'm receiving additional credit to do that. And I'm pushing out the contract expiration out a month and giving myself more time for the trade to work out. Now I could actually lower the strike too. Let's say I wanna do the 72 strike. Well, now the limit price, it went down. Instead of collecting 37 cents, I'm actually only collecting six extra cents in credit, but I'm reducing the strike from 73 down to 72. So now I don't need CVS to stay above 73. I need to stay above 72. And that's even better than what I had before. So I'm improving my strike and giving myself more time and still collecting a net credit of six cents. Let's say I wanna push the strike down even more to 71. Well, now the limit price is negative 17, which means I have to actually pay a debit of 17 cents to roll this because I'm improving my strike so much that I actually have to pay for that luxury. Um, even though it is in fact a, a month out, the, the value of the 71 put is a lot less than the value of the 73 put. Even that of August, the one in August, it's actually less valuable than the one in August. So I'm actually paying more to close the August than I am to sell the September 71 strike. But it's only a net debit of 17 cents. So although I would be paying a debit, it would reduce my strike by a lot. And net net, because I actually collected an original 75 cents right here on the first trade, you know, you net those two out. So let's bring up the calculator again. So I originally collected $75 on the first put by rolling it out to September and down to the 71 strike, I'm actually paying this 17 cents. So I'll be reducing my net credit that I originally had by 17 bucks, but I'm still left with a net credit of 58 bucks. So it's still a net credit and there's still, I have still have premium and, and the ability to profit on this trade, even though I paid a debit to roll it. So that could be the case too. I would greatly improve my strike. 
Sure, I have to pay a little bit of a premium, but I still have a net credit nonetheless. So that's how rolling works. When you have a sold option out there that's not going well, you have the option to roll it. And what you're doing is you're pushing out the expiration date and you may have the actual opportunity to also lower the, the strike price of the contract to give yourself a higher probability of success, not only because of the extra time, but also because of the improved strike. So I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments down below. If you still have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, but that's going to do it, guys. So if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe for more content. And as always, I will see you all next time.